All right, everybody. Today's in this video, we're going to go through the town hall mastermind for Sunday. We're going to go through some of the uh, most visionary ideas in blockchain about solving this problem, about getting the uh, peer to peer electronic cash system, the people their own sovereign money, a, a tr and an infinite truth ledger that solves the world's problems out to the people. And we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to go through some of the uh, open the forum up to 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 open up to any grievances that anyone has uh, about the last couple of spaces because we had a lot of comfort, controversial ideas about Dr. Wright and people have a big difference of opinion about where things should go and the court's ruling on that Satoshi trial. So mm -hmm. I encourage, uh, you know, positive positive discussion on these things. But, it, you know, in a quick starting point, that the intent and the purpose of this is to under the Napoleon Hill mastermind, Andrew Carnegie mastermind principle. And I'm going to share a couple stories here as we get started on that and how, uh, but just a few basic quotes. I mean, do, you know, do more than you're paid for and soon you will be more than you are paid to do. Remember that your only limitation is that what you said in your own mind. A negative mind spawns only negative ideas. So while it's important to air out grievances, it's also key to note that we only come together through harmony after this definite purpose. And we attract other like-minded people in that harmonious, positive spirit. So on that note, let's get started. I'll see you at the top. Okay. All right. Now we can get started. All right. Let's get started. 1234. Um, we're late. This is a great day. This is Gavin Mail. You got, looks like we can hear me okay. So as we get started here on Sunday, this is going to be the uh, future of blockchain X Town Hall Mastermind with industry innovators as we get started. And I want to just do a quick introductory, uh, you know, kind of a, speech here or you know before we go into things so uh one of the uh, back in 1933 when napoleon hill was writing uh, think and grow rich uh he uh he was actually writing it in the white house and he was you know hired by andrew carnegie and to, to get the science of success philosophy out to the world and he interviewed all the top uh, top people at that time one of which being fdr which was he was working for as a volunteer in the white house and so he actually wrote think and grow rich in the white house 1933 and it was in the uh, the most negative time in history for our country that we've had in recent history, where we had the Great Depression, 1929, FDR, 1933. You know, the streets are just desolate. People are under incredible pressure, financial struggling, and it's way, way worse than anything we've ever experienced in our lifetime. And so he's there, and he's writing this book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, in a in a very negative environment. And so one of the uh, key principles about the book was positive mental attitude. Now, I've heard a lot of talk about, oh, positive PMA, it's kind of a joke. And yeah, okay, I get it. Maybe it may be a, maybe a joke and maybe a lot of it's just with poor ill intent and being positive is it, with the wrong intent is, is not good. But the uh, concept in the book is that a positive mental attitude will help attract other people of the same light, you know, and, and, and only a positive mental attitude will bring forward you know, the ultimate purpose and the success because they never built a statute for a tyrant. You know, a tyrant has never been, well, that I can really think of or remembered in history, a negative tyrant is never remembered with a statute. They always build some statute or some memorial about some guy who did something positive and a positive mental attitude in, in, in history. Though the people who who didn't have solutions, you know, it wasn't, they weren't really remembered or maybe they were remembered in the wrong, in a negative light. And so Napoleon Hill, he really uh, brought brought this concept forward, not only the mastermind, but the definiteness of purpose, but the perfect harmony of the group coming together with the same vision. And uh, we got a really, a really hard problem to solve here because the entire world, the entire financial legacy system, it doesn't want, it doesn't want uh, a truth and honest ledger. It doesn't want peer to peer electronic cash. Well, be, you know, it doesn't want to have the people to have their own sovereign independent money. It totally defeats everything that we've ever had in the past. So we've got a huge, huge burden, a huge opposition. And so to, to overcome a monumental, never been overcome in history. And it's much more than just some sort of a, of a spirit of a, of a, of a legal argument. It's spiritual in nature, you know, and every, every thing that we deal with in the physical is controlled by the spiritual. So one of the, uh, one of the, one of the just common prayers that uh, was big around the internet years ago it was uh, by Joe Vitale, and I think it comes from Hawaiian prayer, and I'm just going off memory, but it says, uh, you know, I, uh, it was four lines from a book called Zero Limits, and it said, uh, you know, I love you, I forgive you, I thank you, I'm sorry. 
I love you. I forgive you. I thank you. I'm sorry. And it's important that when we have a grievance, if there is disputes, because there always are, that we, 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 we go back and we tell our adversaries, I love you. I thank you. I forgive you. And I'm sorry because, you know, I'm going to make a lot more mistakes. I will. I'm not perfect. And I'm sure hopefully all of us can agree that we will do the same thing. So, so, but we got to move forward in harmony with a positive mental attitude. And that's the purpose of this mastermind group to come together and, and do that in a harmonious nature, because we're the, the, the more we unite, the, the stronger we're going to be a negative mind spawns only negative ideas, you know, and, and remember that our only limitation is that which we said in our own mind. Yeah. You know, so what's saying that this little tiny group of, of nobodies can actually change, can actually help to, to, to do an impossible feat of actually solving this problem which, of getting this digital cash uh, adopted. How, what, what's to say it's not possible? Well, only us, only us is going to say it. And I don't think there's any other way. So, so if we, we remember that our only limitation is set in our own mind, and that a negative mind only spawns negative ideas. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really important that we come together on that, on these positive notes and, and, and work in harmony. So, um, all right, that's, uh, that's my little introduction on the mastermind today. So, uh, Miss, uh, Casey, Nicole, we can go, why don't we go on over to you? Good morning. Good afternoon here Good afternoon. in Arkansas. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for bringing up the Ho'oponopono stuff. I think it's such a powerful um, awareness to adopt in one's life. So awesome for bringing that up. And I'm excited to be here. And thank you for bringing us all together again. Yeah, and that's the four. That's the four lines. I love you. I thank you. I forgive you. I'm sorry. I had that on my refrigerator for years. Anytime there was a dispute, I'd be like, I remind myself every morning, oh, you know, I'm always in a legal dispute of some kind, it seems like. And so, well, we may disagree. I still love you. I thank you. I forgive you. And I'm sorry. And it's still peace between the parties. So um, let's go on over to our good friend, Sir Toshi in the UK, buddy. Good morning. You're welcome to unmute. Oh, there hey. Go. Yeah. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good, buddy. Good, good. Welcome. Why don't Thanks you very much. give yeah, us a two-minute two update? You know, we had a really long on um, what's a, what's the latest and greatest in Satoshi's world <laughs> or anything you want to cover. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've just had a, a busy weekend, actually, but I had a really good response from the from the last town hall that we did from people saying that they were really chuffed to bits that I was that we were talking about the sovereignty uh, because uh, it, it's quite surprising, actually, how many people in uh, BSV are actually aware of this movement uh, and what sovereignty is and so the the message i got was um i'm really thankful that you brought this up because there aren't many people actually talking about it but we need to because it's it's hugely important hugely important uh, uh particularly to do with craig's uh situation that he's in because you know people are questioning whether or not judge meller is a bad actor he is absolutely a bad actor the, the entire judgment that he's written on Craig, he's referred to him as Dr. Wright, and he's put Wright in capital letters. So he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, and like I said, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And so he he is right. There's like when you look at a document and then you see something written in capitals, because people are ignorant of what it means, um, they just think, all oh, right, well, it's just written in capital letters doesn't mean anything. That's the worst thing you can think of. Everything has meaning in a document. There is nothing that is done by accident. So, so Mello, when he referred to Dr. Wright and put Wright in capitals, is absolutely referring to Craig's legal fiction. And when you're referring to a legal fiction, you can do anything. You can make up any bullshit excuse because it is because the entire thing is bullshit. In fact, what he's doing is, re is repugnant to the Constitution. Um, so really, we should be asking him, look, you know, you said that Dr. Wright didn't create the white paper, um, didn't create the Bitcoin, um, uh, didn't start the Bitcoin network. But did Craig, did Craig Stephen start the Bitcoin network? Because it's Craig Stephen that's on the stand. And then we might say to him, well, you've written here, Dr. Wright. You know, uh, where did you get that from? Because if you're telling us that uh, Dr. Wright was on the stand, and swore that he was Dr. Wright, well, then you're referring to a living individual. And therefore, a, li a living individual is not dead. So therefore, you have um, effectively um, invalidated your own judgment by saying that 
a corporate fictitious entity said X, Y, and Z and did X, Y, and Z. You know, so I think maybe because Craig is very unlikely to um, maybe believe any of this stuff because he, he, yeah, I mean, his his mind is incredible. He will, he's got this ability to just absorb things that he read, but things that he reads, but this, this is hidden occult knowledge. Really, you would never find it because they don't want you to know it. So I think it's probably going to take one of us to actually um, trademark his name and then actually write to the judge and say, well, look, you're using an already trademarked name related to a corporate entity. So therefore, you can't use it. Um, you know, there, there's all this kind of stuff that maybe we could probably do this behind the scenes to to help Craig out, because if he doesn't if he doesn't rebut what the judge is doing to him, which is steamrolling his corporate fiction into a prison cell. He will find himself in prison. And I don't think he um, I don't think he comprehends how dangerous the situation is that he's actually in, because there's as far as I'm concerned, there is <clears throat> there is nobody um, in Enchain or even, you know, CoinGeek um, that is sharing this information with anyone. Uh, Calvin is completely unaware of this. Stefan is completely unaware of this. Um, and Craig hasn't really revealed whether or not he is aware of it or not. But I would say chances are he's not because his lawyers <clears throat> should really be doing all this for him. It's his lawyers that should be saying, hold on a minute, you've got no right to uh, to call or refer to him as a liar or, or a fraud because there is no evidence of any fraud or fraud. You know, if if you're going to call him or state that there are um, that there are forgeries and um, and fraud has been committed. Show us the evidence, because you cannot state that something is a fraud or a fraudery is being committed without showing the evidence, and there's none. Um, right so, yeah. Well, I I love what you say there, and I'd love to open up a little bit on that when we get after we get through the other speakers here, if we can, Satoshi, and then we can. Yeah, of course. Open that up more. So let's uh, let's go on over to Smila's in the Austrian Alps. Are you able to unmute? Yes. Good morning. Or good afternoon. Good evening. Where you are? You didn't, yeah, you didn't send me the co-host thing, or did you? I don't think so. Uh, no. Let me see. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, I did now. Okay, let's see if it works. <laughs> well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I worked. Okay, the mic is on. Okay, it's working this time. <laughs> okay, it's working now. So, hello, everybody. Lovely to see everybody again. And, uh, yeah. We've had some great conversations. It's super amazing. I thank you all so much for that. Uh, yeah, and uh, you were saying, Gavin, that uh, there is, what was the word that you, that you called it? <laughs> that people have some some things on the heart that are bothering them? Grievance. What was the word you called that? Grievance. One more time? Grievance. Grievance. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that is definitely also an interesting thing, a relevant thing, and uh, and that's yeah. many of us are able to talk about these kind of things decent, decently. So, uh, so yeah, that that is definitely a thing to not ignore. I would say, no doubt about that. Yeah. So that was. Let me just end on your your space, your two minutes, if I can. Yeah. So if that, that'll open up, if there are grievances. That they're important, you know. We want to want to hear about them. And again, I'm not the judge here. I'm not a freaking, you know. I'm just saying, you know. But we have we should have a space to say if there's some sort of a grievance, then it should be talked about. Um, you know, while we stay positive at the same time, we want to work work things out if there are some sort of a grievance. Um, it's really important that we talk about those things with each other, not behind each other. That's what I'm saying, directly with each other, because things can be really worked out in that way, super fast. Um, okay, let's go on over to B. Uh, I haven't heard from BSV Panama before. I'm just really excited. I've heard a lot about him. Is he able to unmute um, BSV Panama? Hi, everybody. Thank hey. you for inviting me. You're welcome, buddy. Uh, I, am in a, I am in a store, so you, you probably hear a lot of background noise. Um, sorry about that. I, I, I will go 
I, I will go out in a moment, so it, it will be easier to, you know, to, to speak. But um, I just wanted to say thank you, Gavin, for opening up like you did this space because it's it's amazing how the energy immediately was uh, was opening as well. You know, it's it's like a, a, a ray of light. That's why I always say I like this this. Uh, um, the saying, be, be the light, you know, and, and when, we, when we are the light, the light shines. And immediately people can, 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 can feel it, you know, and you can tell by, by the, the level of quality and, the, and um, who came in and, every, and who, immediately everything was, was opening up, you know. I, wa I was for hours in another space before and the, the energy was, the change was amazing. And so I would, I would suggest uh, use this kind of opening each time, you know, for example, the open uh, uh, sentence, you know, something like that, because we, if we connect to the light, we connect to spirit, we connect to this openness, then we can really build anything just because we are everybody focused on, on the best for, for us and for everybody, you know, and this is what, what we need in, in the PSV system. We need to, to, to know that we are we are represented, we're representing the light that it's the technological aspect of, of this light. I, I see it as the BSV system. So this, this, this light of the truth, this light of the transparency, of honesty, of, uh, of, um, of, 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 of real reality, what I call real reality, is kind of translated into the BSV system. So at the, at the technological level. So. We, we can bridge between the spirit and the reality through this technological system. And uh, opening up with this kind of connection is, I think, is, is fundamental. It's great. Thank you, Gavin. And uh, uh, to, to, do, um, to, to make a comment on, on Sertoshi's, uh, uh, Sertoshi's uh, uh, not, uh, noticing what, what is happening, yes, please, someone pick up the phone and tell, tell, um, uh, tell uh, Craig Wright about the, the, the real shenanigans going on, because I'm convinced this is the, this is the thing. And so let's be the light for, for him as well, you know. We just have to take a stand and, uh, and forget all the fears and everything and just go for it. I don't have his number. I would do it if I have his number. Someone gives me, someone gives me his number, I will call him up. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you. BSV Panama, we got some wise words coming in at us right now. So it's so so key when we have people with wisdom to share. And anybody else wants to jump up and speak, if I recognize you guys, uh, please jump up. I'd like to just know who, who I'm speaking with to make sure that um, we know who you are. Feel free, you know, if Casey, you know anyone and they request, uh, feel free to let them come up. Um, but, but please announce who you are. So... Um, now that that being said, so let's just kind of open up. Now, one of the one of the things that uh, Sertoshi had mentioned, if that sounds like a very relevant thing, is about about Dr. Wright, and and you know, uh, more about on a personal level because we care about people, okay, uh, and and we don't want to see someone someone who we care about harmed. Um, you know, yeah, we should we 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 got to come together and be positive and surround the good message around dr right because uh maybe he doesn't see how serious uh th this is of what he's facing and it is serious um you know and you know if he doesn't get that overturned on appeal then yeah they're going to they're going to probably go all out on a on a criminal prosecution on him that's going to take later on a you know on on the referral but you know uh, I'm, I'm going to be excited to see what he does because over the next 21 days, the, the, when the when the judgment comes out in writing, once that comes out, then he'll have that 21 day period, and on that 21 day period is where he'll get to to say potentially bring in and argue the Agar Hansen, uh, the Agar Hansen interference bad actor. So that's that right there is the is going to be the fundamental uh, the fundamentals in overturning this case is is the Agar Hansen interference because it was one of the defenses that that Wright had raised, saying there was a bad actor when he disclosed these documents. They they may have been tampered with by a bad actor. He didn't know who it was, but now it's not an allegation. It's a judgment before this court, the same court, and that right there is uh, you know hopefully Dr. Wright can if if he has any chance overturning it, it's going to be on that interference and a, a potential mistrial. 
Um, I mean, somebody brought up on the last thing, fraud uh, vitiates all contracts. So if that's the case and there was interference, that would be considered like a, a fraudulent act. And so it, it could be a very strong argument on appeal. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't at all be surprised if this case goes back on appeal. That's always been my prediction. Uh, I'm trying to be neutral about it. If I saw there was no way to go back on it, then I'd be the first to say this is over. But, you know, I, I've seen so many people who don't who don't read the law or maybe aren't too familiar with case law. And they think that, well, when a judgment happens, that's it. Well, now, most of the time, a really solid case will get overturned on appeal or get confirmed on appeal. And this is a world changing historical case. So. For those who think that it's not going to be appealed, um, uh, I think they're they're just misunderstanding things. So, anyways, that's that's just my response there. If anybody has any comments or or okay, we got a new speaker up, Casey. Did you want to? Yeah, BSB search. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Yes, welcome and thank you for finally coming in. I am so happy to finally see you here. Oh, <laughs> nice. So you. Thanks, everyone. Oh, it sounds yeah. like you know you know uh, Casey or. Mila, I, I, please introduce yourself. I haven't, I don't think I've, we've met before. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. It's Marquez here from VSV Search. Mike, Marquez, um, very nice to meet you. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. All right. Yeah. Look, I um, I, I haven't been keeping up with um, with this case, but yeah, from, so I, I was just listening in to, to see where I can pick up the conversation. So I haven't picked up much, but uh yeah, it's obvious this 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 case now as a follow up to uh, to the Copa Craig Wright trial. But what I've noticed in the Copa Craig Wright trial is that, and it's something that has hasn't been picked up on. If you take a look at all the witnesses produced by Copa, they all belong under the same banner. They were they're all associated to DCG or um, and and that. That to me is just a, a big conflict of interest that anybody with any legal experience or should be able to pinpoint that that's uh, all those witnesses are just not reliable because in, in some way uh, they are all sort of being paid under the same, uh, they belong under the same company or they're owned by the same people. So, I mean, it's just an obvious, to me, it's an obvious, um, um, obvious fact that that a lot of our so-called journalists or legal experts or analysts are are not mentioning. Let me just recap are... on that, uh, Marquez, if I may. Yeah, I think what you're saying is that the, uh, for example, the witnesses that that Copa had used, Adam Back, yeah. the gentleman yeah. from uh, Circle. Uh, and yep. uh, there was another one. Those are actual members of Copa. They weren't. They weren't like uh, you know third parties. They were. They were. They were the opposition. That's yeah, I indeed. That even then, and even on a wider circle, like you've got that uh, person who who created uh, that forum, uh, took over, created a forum, and then kicked out Craig Wright. Didn't sign sign him up. Yeah. Um, Tertoshi, do you remember who he was referring to? Uh, sorry, say that one more time. I've just sent you yeah. Marcus's. Uh, I've just sent you Marcus's YouTube channel, mate. Oh, uh, thank BSV, you. So, yeah, if you uh, yeah, if you haven't heard of him before, he does some really great, uh, really great YouTube stuff. Really good. Marcus does. Yeah, you're on yeah, YouTube. Yeah. Thanks, Tertoshi. Yes. Right. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, Marcus. I, 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 I forgive me and and just introduce everybody else because this is first of all, give your Twitter handle and your YouTube channel because this is going to be recorded and put on YouTube. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, it's uh, at BSV Search, um, and the YouTube channel is also BSV Search. Uh, I've got another profile. It's Marcus Comelab, but you know that's used for other things. I use this handle mainly to mainly for BSV stuff. So that's me. I'm not anonymous. You know, I'm I'm out there publicly. So um, now I I'm just an I'm consider myself an independent. I'm I'm an independent. Um, I've just been watching um, the Bitcoin story, following the Bitcoin story for a while now, and even since 2017 during the the BCH BTC 
fork um, and I could just see how how Craig Wright was bullied how the you know the the agenda that uh, that the hijackers uh, of, of Bitcoin wanted to do you can just see it's a sabotage and you see it coming and then you you're just watching it year after year and you just need to speak up and yeah so about two years ago I what I wanted to do was I wanted to really to me the key for Bitcoin to succeed is to be used as cash I mean that's that's what it was there for and i think that's the that's the sort of achilles heel as well as the if if we can do that it's something that we can all participate in you know so about two years ago if i could it was holiday it was summer holidays then mm -hmm. and i wanted to go say uh i wanted to go for a holiday and i'm looking for a, an accommodation or i want to go eat at a restaurant i want to be able to support businesses and give my business to to merchants like that like that who can accept uh, bitcoin bsv um so so that's why i i started uh, putting together this web website called bsv search so that people who want to sell their products or services can just list their restaurant their accommodation um you know if you're doing a garage sale things like we can buy each other's used stuff in exchange for BSVs, things like that. Even um, services, like if you're a graphic designer, a web developer, and you want to get paid in BSV, advertise yourself there. So I, I built that website and then I started promoting it, but then I realized, okay, BSV, the audience is actually very small or or that most of us here are, are still actually just treating this as a hodl token um and that's that's not a i've got no issues against that that's great hodl but hodl hodl most of it but remember that it won't mean anything unless we actually spend it like even just a little bit the key is to say hodl 90 percent if that's what you want if you look at it as something that's valuable in the future naturally you don't want to spend all of it but just what we can do for example right you've got your stash whatever stash you've got keep it but then let's say if you want to buy something instead of spending cash you just buy bsvs for let's say you're going to get a haircut 50 euros uh, 50 pounds um sorry 50 us dollars for example what is uh, bsv now 63 uh well i know this america in in america there's a hairstylist he charges 50 us dollars instead of paying him US dollars, if you can just buy, say, BSVs for a week for the weekly spending that you need, and you use that, those BSVs to spend for the, for the things that you need. You don't, you don't touch your stash, but you're, instead of spending your cash, because you're going to spend it anyway, then just buy a, the BSV that you need for a month, for a week, and spend it during that period. And we reward merchants, we reward suppliers who are willing to accept BSVs. You give them your business. And that's how we can grow the BSV economy. Um, so BSV search, if I understand it correctly, basically what you're saying is like, if I'm a merchant, I can list on that website that I accept that form of payment. That That's right. Yeah. So let's say if you're if you're a merchant, uh, whatever you're selling, if you're willing to accept BSVs, just list it there. Now, so I'm trying to to. It doesn't cost anything to list. Um, I'm trying to cover as many as possible, as many industries as possible. Uh, renting accommodation selling cars, selling boats, um, like Fiverr type of, of services, you can do that. And that's what I'm trying to build it as. So yes, let's say if you're a merchant and you're selling whatever, you list it there. So people will find you and say, people who want to support the BSV economy can go there and say, yep, I'm in Chicago. I'm looking for this service. I'm looking this for this product. 
oh, here's a guy who's willing to support BSV. I'm going to give him my business. Mm, got it. So that's the long-term vision for it. Right. Yeah. So if you're looking the, for that service, you can I'm search not, for it in there. That's that's right. So I'm trying to make it as, as search-friendly as possible. I, I'm thinking of it more like a Google sort of, um, you know, with Google back then, you just type in whatever you're searching and it should be able to search things for you pretty quickly. That's sort of the idea. You just type type things or use filters to be able to find whatever service you can. Um, yeah, so that's the idea with uh, with BSV search. Beautiful. Um, but I know that there's not a lot of us. So what I'm also trying to attract is basically the no coiners, people who don't know and care about about this crypto rivalry, all this technical stuff. I, I want to attract people who just want to get things done because they want to, they want to live. They, you know, they, they just want to make a living. They want to make a living from their products, from their business. Um, and, and those are the people I also want to attract. Um, well, that's the biggest market, the no coiners. Well, exactly. Th that's, that's the thing is that, you know, we can sort of, fight all the all the crypto people here but we're just a percent of a percent of a percent if you we've got the wide world who haven't heard of this thing and if we can get them to use it then we'll be miles ahead they they can turn things around and all this rivalry won't matter because what will matter if these people come in if the masses come in, um, then what matters is the what works, and we all know we all know that BSV works, and that's why we're here. We Mark, all know it's going to win. Marquez, if, yeah. Would you just take me back a little bit in time to your story? Uh, it sounds like you're in America now, where you aren't, or you, you know, where, where are you from? Like, what is, um, what is your story about how you even got to where you are? How you found um, this technology just just it's such a yeah, yeah it's yeah, such just, a confusing mess out there for people and it sometimes it just hears it helps to hear how mm, you put this puzzle yeah. together sure sure well i was around, around 2015 i was moving countries I, I used to live in australia and then i moved over to belgium but during that transition around 2015, I, I bought a little bit of Bitcoin, like $50 or something worth of Bitcoin. But I, I was just following it from there, you know. And then from 2017, I wasn't really involved too much. I was just listening most of the time. Um, but then the forks happened. And then I started looking into why, what was the argument behind the fork? Um, there was the big blockers and the small blockers. And then you take a look at the arguments. Well, there was a time where I actually wanted to buy BTC. It was around April, I believe. And the transaction was stuck there for like a week. And, and I was thinking, what this isn't really currency for the planet, right? This isn't money for the world if it's going to be like this. And then that's when I learned, well, that's because it's only capable of seven transactions per second. And the whole argument was to basically to stop it from scaling. And then you start thinking, okay, why would anyone want to stop it from scaling? Then you start looking into who's, who could be behind this? What could be the incentive? What could be the motivation? Um, yeah, so I started following from there, BSV, and then the BSV-BCH split. And again, it, the arguments for BSV made sense all the way. So I've been following BSV and, and now I'm only pure BSV. When you were following um, it back in those days, where were you getting your information mm, from? Uh, like everyone else. Uh, well, I was, I was uh, in, in forums, you know, like Reddit, Twitter, you know, like everyone else, but probably deeper than most people because yeah, I, I noticed that some people who, who follow it, they follow it, they give it just as much time, but they seem to just follow the uh, the main um, main 
media sources, which, as we now know, are controlled by, by DCG related companies. But yeah, you have to take a look deeper as, uh, at actually what was happening. Um, yeah. Sounds like a sounds like an amazing story. We had someone on called Mags from Canada the other day, and she shared uh, she shared her story. I think it was only six months ago she she started getting into this stuff, and she just went through was unable to wrap, unravel the whole maze in six months, which is a very complicated <laughs> maze to get to to get to the bottom of things, right? I mean, it's it's it seems almost well, like, it, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's. Um... Well, when you start taking a look at who's actually behind, who's, you have to follow the money. And if you take a look at who's funding, who's funding Blockstream, it then turns out to be these big corporations who are, who have interests in making sure that Bitcoin doesn't work. Someone, so, someone in London pointed out to me, uh, Marquez, about, you know, this is so obvious. What is the name? Block stream, what are they doing? Block stream. Block yeah. stream. Block. They're blocking the stream. Block the stream of transaction. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And there was that. Uh, there was that. Um, back in 2015, someone posted online a sort of sketch of what block stream is. It, and it said block stream in one second, and he drew what what it actually meant um uh and it literally is they're blocking the transactions from going through so that basically bitcoin from happening they're blocking it they're just making sure it's seven transactions per second it's so that they can make money from the type of technology that they can profit from, like Lightning Network or or Liquid, um, you know, it's a bit like a tollway thing where they 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 choke the traffic going through the tollway. They charge people tolls, money. Um, so that's what that's what they've done. They've basically crippled Bitcoin. They've sabotaged Bitcoin. Um, keep it at seven transactions per second um, so that they're hoping to introduce to us their products like Lightning Network and all these things that they, they control. So they're trying to divert the traffic away from Bitcoin onto theirs. So you know, with, or with or they're, a... they're making us rely on their on the things that they control. How do we go forward from here? Is is your solution BSV search? I mean, how how do we how do we go forward? In my opinion, it's just it starts with people really exchanging products and services with each other. If we can create with all the people that's here, if we can just support people, whatever we all make a living somehow, right? Uh, and that's how commerce is done. I believe e economy, economics is the most important thing uh, and the easiest and the most relevant thing that we can all do. We've got a product to sell. We've got a service to sell. If we can earn BSVs, pay each other in BSVs, then BSV will gain that momentum. That, so, that is hard to stop. Casey? That, can I just add something here? Because I love what you're saying and I agree completely. I just, um, this is why I was trying to bring up uh, Michael Tellinger, what he's doing with onesmalltown.org. I don't know if you guys know about that, but it's a blueprint for human prosperity where we can all um, duplicate this model of contributionism in small towns and all just build so much abundance within the community amongst ourselves that people from outside the community start coming to get goods and services from what they're building in these small town initiatives that are being built. And <clears throat> I've already onboarded Michael Tellinger to BSV, but it was a long time ago when like Money Button was around and I was trying to explain to him how BSV is the absolute perfect currency for these small towns. So if anyone can get in touch with him and <laughs> tell him this is a perfect 
um, thing, even though he's like trying to build these communities where you don't need money, I still think there's going to be a period of time where we do. And this is like a technology that would be perfect for an initiative like that. So um, I just wanted to throw that out there. If anyone wants to go look up onesmalltown.org, I think it's a beautiful blueprint for human prosperity. Onesmalltown.org, Michael Tellinger. Sounds like a small an example of the small world network that Brett always ta talks about. That's or, exactly what we need. Well, why can't a small world network make this whole thing work? Well, and the other thing that Michael Tellinger has uh, in that whole thing is free energy technology from sound resonating devices that have been found all over sacred sites in South Africa. Um, so there's a lot of technology available to us. We just have to start demanding it amongst ourselves and using it with each other. So thank you for building such an amazing site, BSV Search. That sounds wonderful. I have not actually like dove into what you're doing. I've seen you a couple times around, but I'm excited to hear that you've created that space for people to use. So thank you. Marquez, back to you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be creating more, I, I think, at the moment, you know, I'll be creating more videos to actually do simple rundowns of how to use it. I know that with a lot of websites, uh, when um, the easiest thing to do is to create more guides to make it easy to, to use so that people don't have to sort of read so much. You want, uh, you want them to get started. So I'm going to do more of those. Um, but yeah, I just felt like I needed to get into the education informative stage. And this is why the BSV search videos and articles are, are there is, is to create awareness for BSV because we need more people. Uh, we're a bit like, you know, we're kids, right? And we, we, there's a playground that we will all want to play in, but there's not enough kids. So we have to invite more kids so that we can all play, you know, that's, that's the way I look at it. And, and if we're just confined to our small little community, then, um, then it's going to be a struggle. So well, that, we have to keep roping more point. people in. Maybe we could start with that. Like, uh, you know, like what is the problem and how does it solve that problem? How about we start with those two questions? What sort of pro what is the problem and how does it solve that solve that problem? There's there's many, there's many problems that I can think of, but I think the main thing that that what many of us all over the world need is we went to, we want to make a living, right? Um, and and mo at the moment the world is controlled by or not not controlled, but we are sort of suffocated. Biz small small businesses um, were were limited because of the cost of transactions, because of the complexity of transactions. Um, because of the the current fiat system um and in this day and age with the way what what's possible now with technology we don't really have an excuse because bsv can do all this they can really make our transactions cheaper they can make it quicker um it's already here i mean even before terra node even a hundred thousand transactions per second that is big enough to to transact with each other um so yeah the, what we need is we always need to make money we always need to make money to make a living so that we can put food on, on the table um and i think what's what's distracting is that there are forces or there's still a we still believe somehow that we have to convert to fiat so that we can use BSV, but we don't. We just have to get straight into it because the any attempt to try and work fiat to work with BS to work with Bitcoin, these are all like um, intermediate transi transitory stages, which may take long or which could never happen at all. It's a bit like, you know, when cars were invented, it's like trying to attach a, a horse to 
or it, it's a, a, a carriage to a car because we're just so used to having horses. And that to me, what I think fiat currencies are now, fiat, the monetary payment systems that we've got, we're still trying to attach this old antiquated technologies and systems into Bitcoin, which is so much more superior. And instead of actually accepting that BSV, we just go straight to BSV, we're trying to use things like CBDCs, uh, we're trying to figure out other ways of how to work with it, you know, creating gold, creating, um, attaching its value to gold, for example, but it doesn't have to be. It has its value as it is, as a Bitcoin token, as a Satoshi. So, Marquez, before we go over to Brett, can we? Uh, can I go over to Emilio for a moment? He's joined on the stage. So, Emilio, good yeah. afternoon, buddy. How you doing? All right. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> Thanks for having me on. On Happy Father's Day, all greetings to everyone across the globe. I suppose we're global, right? But uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, it's important uh, to thank somebody like BSV Search, you know, and uh, uh, I, I have a website uh, there for Blockchain House Portugal that exists and I have a, a banner that runs uh, a lot of uh, uh, the companies that are uh, working on, a, on the BSV chain. So that importance of us all contributing and and being part of a chain, right, where th there's no broken links, is is really important. And and, and you can see how easily I have a tough skin. Uh, a lot of people don't have a tough skin, so people are easily uh, discouraged you because uh, I don't know their ego is a little bit hurt, um, right? It's uh, that the abandonment of arrogance and ego is very difficult for people, right? So you have to get to a point like that in life. Uh, obviously, you got to stick up for what you create, create and what you believe in. As Dr. Craig Wright holds his middle finger up to the world when they tell him he didn't. Right. So that's not being egotistic or arrogant. That's just sticking up for something that you created, something that you believed in. And I think we're all part of that here. And it's very important that we all unite our forces. And people have reached out like Brett and, and to me, which is, uh, you know, it was very cool to see him do that. Um, so there's people that, that are part of this that are reaching out, but I think more of us should reach out more and join forces and help each other with our strengths to become stronger. Thank Elio, you. I, what is your, uh, first of all, what is your website? Is it blockchainhouseportugal.com? Correct. And what, can you tell everybody, what is your, what is your story here? It sounds like, uh, you know, I've referred to you, but how did you, uh, how did you get here where, to where you are now? Um, yeah, my, um, I heard about Bitcoin in, in uh, a Wired magazine and, and pro possibly uh, popular mechanics. <laughs> and it stuck in my head. And then um, I was in, the, in an elevator with some colleagues of mine when Bitcoin's at $300. And, uh, and then um, a friend of mine was on uh, Facebook. That's uh, an instrumental uh, part, uh, mm -hmm. super, a super vocal person on the BSV space, which is uh, Randy Schwartz. And uh, Randy is, uh, he's unbelievable, man. If there's anybody that holds up the sword for BSV, that's the guy. So Randy became like my mentor. And uh, I uh, found Dr. Craig Wright's camp, which is like, you know, we all know. Randy NYC? I'm sorry? Randy, New York City? Yeah, of course. Okay. And, uh, you know, but, you know, he's brash, man. You know, a lot of us, you know, a lot of us here, I'm, I'm not brash. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm not brash unless I'm attacked. But um, some people, you know, they're very vocal of how they stand, you know, but, and he's like that, you know, but he's a BSV supporter and he'll go down with the sword, you know. Um. So um, meeting Randy and uh, getting involved, getting uh, to know Dr. Craig Wright's story and being a punk rocker, I uh, went and fought for the underdog. And then I started my project in Portugal years ago, and it came into fruition when my parents passed away and I inherited, uh, my sister and I inherited uh, their, uh, my uh, forefathers' legacies. Now you're all about, sounds like you're on a mission. Well, I've always been on a mission, man. I believe that we're here, you know, uh, um, you know, there's a few things that happen in our lives that mark us, right? 
And uh, one of them, uh, you know, I was brought up Roman Catholic, but I fe felt a lot of emptiness in that. And I wind up in America and who's here that's very spiritual and very honorable, the natives, you know. So I wind up going to South Dakota, staying at Pine Ridge Indian Reservation quite a few times. And I stayed, uh, I wind up in the lap of crazy horses people, man, and, you know, his, his grandkids, you know, his great grandkids. And uh, that took me somewhere really, really far and to the point where I tell my kids, you know, you're here on this planet to help this planet, not take from this planet. So I think not too many people have a concept of giving back to the planet. They have a concept of taking to the planet, right? We take from the planet. We take the resources. We take everything. So uh, it's nice to think of be giving back to the planet. You know, like the guy that plants a thousand trees. Let's do that. Oh, let's do that here right now. Second to that. All right. Well, thank you, Emilio. Let's go on over to our friend, Brett Banafi. And, and, you know, Brett, I don't know, you may have told your story a million times, but I would love to hear it again, just briefly, uh, just as a summary. Um, you know, how you doing, my friend? Hey, doing wonderful. Uh, happy Father's Day out there to everybody. Um, yeah, we'll uh, maybe take a few moments to talk about uh, my own journey and, uh, especially uh, my my father, who just passed, you know, in uh, middle of April, and um, and so it's first Father's Day without him. But uh, but you know, he was he was a tremendous man, and um, you know, Gavin, I've heard you talk about your dad and the impact that he had on you, and it really reminds me of my own. Uh, so maybe I'll just tell a quick story uh, for fun you know, about, about who my dad was. Well, first of all, before I jump into that, I just want to mention, you know, one of his quotes, you know, he always used to fill me with quotes that were, you know, like sometimes the, um, you know, the, the truth of those quotes didn't really resonate with me until I was older, but, you know, he used to say the journey is over or the journey is 50% completed when you've taken the first step. That was one of his most favorite quotes. So I encourage anyone that's listening here, you know, if there's something that you're waiting to take the first step on and you need a little bit of motivation, um, you know, just take my dad's words of advice there. It's 50% completed because the first step is so important, you know. Um, and he used to say, you know, for example, so he led uh, Dale Carnegie leadership training courses, um, you know, and, uh, and, you know, one of the things that he learned in that program was he said, you know, plan your first minute, plan your last minute when you're giving a presentation, and then you'll figure out the rest <laughs> during the middle of it. Uh, so, you know, I love that. Uh, he loved figuring things out while he was while he was uh, in the middle of it. And, you know, I'll tell you uh, real quick, a little bit of his, his backstory. So he was, uh, you know, a line cook at a restaurant and, uh, you know, he had one of his friends, he grew up in a very, very poor neighborhood. Uh, he started working when he was nine years old. First of all, he was born in 1939. So he, uh, he had a good long life. Um, and, uh, you know, started working at nine, you know, was helping to uh, put food on the table for his family, even as just a young kid. And, um, and, you know, he, he, he so he worked through restaurants most of his life. And he had a friend of his come through the re restaurant and he was wearing a nice watch, wearing driving a nice car, but he knew that he was from around the neighborhood where where my dad grew up. And he knew that, you know, they didn't grow up with money. So somehow he must have, how did he get this? You know, how did he get this nice watch and the suit? And the guy told him, you know, well, I started selling copy machines. So my dad wanted to do that right away. Started selling copy machines. He was uh, almost instantly the best salesperson in the whole company. So he was in, you know, their reports and their in their uh, national reports and their national newsletters, et cetera. Jerry Banfi is, you know, the top salesperson, et cetera. And, you know, he he even worked out a deal with the company where he was going to be able to be made a partner by the company. Be, if he could hit these certain sales quotas, a million dollars this quarter or something like that. We ended up hitting six million dollars that quarter. So he just smashed what his quota was. And, you know, he was so excited because he was finally going to have a piece of what he was working for as an owner. And when he went in to get the uh, partner contract, you know, he uh, was, was you know, working out with them the agreement, et cetera. And they had a disagreement at that, at that uh, partner table and they let him go right there. So he said at that point he was, you know, like floored. He had sunk everything into this company and, um, you know, they had his, he had a company car, you know, uh, 
So he, he was on the, you know, basically looking for the next opportunity. He said the only thing that the company forgot that they'd given him was that they gave him a, uh, a um, plane ticket to Hamburg, Germany for the World Business Fair in, uh, in 19, I think it was 74. So he went to his, his neighbor across the street from him. He borrowed $1,000 and he went to Hamburg, Germany as a, as a free agent. He didn't have any company that he was working for. And while he was out there, uh, he met this Japanese guy and he had, uh, he, he was, you know, had a scowl on his face. He was, um, you know, uh, you know, having, having an awful time with something. My dad was saying, you know, what's wrong? What's wrong? And they said, this is, uh, Mr. Mitterai and Mr. Mitterai has, uh, first of all, he didn't speak English. So he had, you know, translators, he has the hiccups. So my dad said, Oh, he has the hiccups. Hold on. Let, I can get rid of the hiccups. So my dad has like, you know, a little bit of a, a hidden trick for how to get rid of hiccups. If anyone's out there, it guaranteed to work. I've heard a lot of people talk about, you know, hold your breath or water, drink water. I've never seen any of that work for me, but take a little lemon wedge and pour some sugar on it and take a bite of a lemon wedge with sugar. Hiccups are gone instantly. So that's what he did. He, he cured this guy's hiccups. The guy was so thankful. They uh, said, well, what do you do? He, he said, well, we sell copy machines. That was exactly what my dad did. So he said, all right, well, let me come back and take a look at the copy machines that you have. So they go back and takes a look at them. He says, you know, they're looking for a U.S. distributor to, to bring the copy machines to America. My dad ends up uh, signing an agreement with them to be the first United States distributor for them. The gr agreement is written entirely in Japanese. My dad does not read Japanese or speak it, you know, but he signs it anyway. And, uh, and his uh, brothers are going, are you crazy? I mean, this is written in Japanese. How are you going to sign this? He said, well, you know, it's, it's more than I have right now. Uh, so it turned out that the uh, that the man that he met was the CEO for Global uh, uh, Canon Global, and he became the first United States distributor for Canon products in America. By the time uh, he gave an equal percentage of his company to all five of his brothers, he always used to say, you know, a business is a band of brothers pulling in the same direction. It's something that I really think about with what we're doing here in BSV. You know, we are very blessed to have a community that is just really pulling for this. And it's not pulling for BSV just for BSV's sake, right? It's really about pulling for the fundamental principles that are at the heart of what we're building about distributed consensus, you know, um, proof of work, small world network, all these things, um, you know. And so, you know, but you have you have to get out there. You have to try. You have to take a chance. Um, and sometimes, you know, taking that first step, that's 50% of what you need to do. So, Brett, this is a, sounds like uh, dad signed the deal with the Japanese CEO of Canon and didn't even know about it after solving his hiccup problem with a lemon wedge and a, and a, with some sugar. And they bonded and he signed, a, signed an unknown contract. No idea what the terms were, but uh, he signed it anyways. It ended up being okay. So... <laughs> Well, wasn't he the same guy that that did something with the fax machine when you were a kid as well? Yeah, yeah. So he was, you know, introducing the fax machine, copy machines, fax machines, office distribution equipment. You know, by the time, you know, again, he gave 50, he gave a equal share to his five brothers. Um, you know, so by the time uh, he, you know, retired, he sold the company back to Canon. And, you know, he had 500 employees, he had 230 salespeople, et cetera, that were, you know, at his services uh, a little bit earlier this year, you know, so many people came up to me uh, that had worked with him and they just said, you know, your dad really gave me a chance, uh, you know, and we would, we would do anything for him. There's a lot of stories of people where he could see something in them and say, you know, you have the ability to get out there and make your own future. You know, you just don't know it yet. Um, and would give people a lot of encouragement to do that. Uh, and yeah, that that was him in a nutshell. Uh, really, you know, like uh, loved life, loved partying, you know, uh, and, and um, you know, gave gave me a great outlook on life. Helped me, helped mold me and grow me into a person that will be able to continue on the legacy, you know? And uh, I think, 
doing that with the fax machine. The fax machine is about transmission of data across an electronic communications line. You know, that's exactly what uh, Bitcoin is. It's the transmission of data across an electronic communication line. It just so happens that that data itself can be money. You know, this was a technology that wasn't possible in the 70s, um, but it is possible today. And what it what it's going to do for in terms of the, you know, the freedom, the ability to have a level playing field, the ability to uh, have a distributed nature for um for consensus, including how we're governed, how, you know, uh, how we build our societies, the, the foundation of our societies, you know, it, um, it really serves as the, the ground floor. And, and you, in some ways, you know, we, we need to start new, you know, we have a, we have a new opportunity to build a new world that is built on a foundation that is unshakable. And, you know, that that unshakableness of it, you know, that has parallels to faith, et cetera. A lot of people that have that live a life based on faith, they understand the principles of that unshakable foundation. Um, but, you know, there's there's always, uh, you know, how, how things transition from, you know, the the um, conceptual and the spiritual to the to the practical and the and the tangible. Sometimes that's not always an easy transition because there's things that are lost in translation with the blockchain technology. We have the ability to preserve the history, to preserve our own history, our own narrative and our own story. And that serves as a way This is the first way that we can teach others right we have to have a history of our own that can be preserved and uh, and you know and again you don't build rome in a day you start someplace and then you figure it out along the way and uh and i'm really proud to be doing that with everyone here and you know back to the fax machine so uh so so back in the day when he was trying to sell the fax uh was was it hard because like before, like, let's say that he was selling me a fax and I didn't have a fax machine. Why the heck would I want one if I didn't have one? And then even if I didn't have one, who am I going to fax? You know, so how, how did he overcome some of those problems that, that, that sounds like, uh, why would you want that if there aren't anybody using the fax machine or who would I send it to? How did he overcome that? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and that that's, you know, the small world network. George Gilder talks about that, um, you know, because the free, if you think about the fax machine, the first person with the fax, who are they going to fax? You know, <laughs> there's no one to fax. They're the only one with the machine. So it's useless. But it grows in utility the more people have it. Well, same with electronic cash, right? You're the first person that's that's accepting uh, electronic cash. We know, um, you know, up in Toronto, uh, they're accepting, you know, BSV, the local students, et cetera, you know, but, but as, as we build more and more locations that are accepting this, as we turn more and more people on the network effect for information is invaluable. And so, you know, what he used to say is the way that he turned people on to this technology is just saying, Hey, you can fax each other, you know, like, so get, get a couple of them for your different departments and then you can fax each other. And, um, and, you know, that that's a novel use case, right? Because uh, all these businesses, they have the ability, they have a need for, you know, uh, settling and, and, uh, you know, distributing funds across their own uh, networks, and their own agencies. And, uh, but sometimes even that might take some clearing, etc, because it has to move out of this. And there's the T the you know, the, the, uh, the, you know, the ability to have a clearinghouse involved, etc. So you just use it with each other. And, um, you know, we see that with tokenization uh, because, you know, you can create tokens for your own product, your own game, your own vision, your own community, et cetera. And, um, you know, that's something that uh, that is a really novel use case, but you can get out the door right away with it. Yeah, Brett Vision, you know, I would like to just, just uh, spin off on that. And I'm, this is going to sound egotistical, but I got to bring it back to myself because I, you know, Brett, when uh, when we met, when he came out to San Francisco to the hackathon a few uh, few months back, he was the first to get, we got a big picture and he said, oh, by the way, I got to get a picture because my dad, he, he wants to know how you're doing. He always asks me about how you're doing. He wants to, he wants to make sure you're doing okay. And I said, your dad, I said, who's your dad? <laughs> you remember that, Brett? He, he he seemed to believe that he and I were, he knew me. What was the story of that? 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was it was fun because at the end of, you know, my dad's life, he just would ask me about you all the time, you know, hey, how's Gavin doing? Uh, because, you know, so Gavin inter in interviewed me, uh, you know, my dad was big on, first of all, he's big on incentives, you know, uh, economic incentives and, uh, and, you know, aligning incentives. So, you know, when he first started doing, um, uh, you know, like his, his, his business, uh, you know, his business was growing. He he was bringing his uh, customers along to these incentive travel plans, and uh, and so he had, you know, when I grew up, five years old or so, we had two villas uh, over the Acapulco Bay, uh, Casa del Rey and Castillo del Rey. They had, you know, a beautiful pool that was right overlooking the whole bay. Um, you know, he had a full live-in staff, uh, like 26, 27 people that lived on staff all year long at that location. Uh, and, you know, so, and I would go down there from time to time. He had a, a catamaran boat off uh, St. Thomas. And, um, you know, so, but what he loved was, you know, give you, a, put a carrot on a stick and say, hey, go get these numbers, go hit these goals. And, you know, that, that villa is yours next week. If you want to, if you want to go, uh, you know, down there and, and relax, go hit these numbers. So, you know, um, eventually he transitioned out of the copy machine business as he sold it back. But then he started selling, um, he started selling soil and mulch and uh, fertilizer, etc. So he called himself an entrepreneur. He was literally <laughs> selling shit for a living. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, the he, an entrepreneur and his um his one of his products was called premium number two because it was literally just uh cow manure that, that had been uh, turned into a fertilizer but he called it premium number two and um <laughs> and so you know so uh when he first started going around to this to the uh to the garden centers trying to get him to buy his mulch his soil his you know manure etc you know, they would tell me again, like, you know, he made friends everywhere he went. So by the time, you know, he, he had a, a long customer uh, base after, you know, by the time he hung him up. But, um, you know, in the beginning, they said, you know, I had a few of his uh, friends, his customers that said, hey, you know, by the, we eventually just started buying stuff off your dad just so he would leave us alone, you know, <laughs> because like he was coming back every week and he was never upset he was never you know making it personal or anything like that it was just hey you know checking in on you you still don't want to buy from me okay i'll be back next week you know this is another lesson that we can use especially with bsv is that you know don't take it personal we have you know we haven't hit that that um you know uh network effect yet but st make some effort every single day and uh and you know you you eventually start to build towards towards something really great so you know, uh, as a result of all of his incentive travel and all this stuff um, that he built, you know, he eventually, he loved going to Mexico. It ended up settling in Mexico. They used to call him Senior Jerry, you know, everywhere he went. Uh, and um, and so, you know, uh, when in just when you interviewed me, Gavin, uh, I was, uh, the first time you interviewed me, I was in Mexico with him. And I think it was just uh, just this past January, and you know he and you were you were asking me some stories about him and he was in the room when you were asking me those stories <laughs> so uh he overheard me talking about him which normally you know he didn't you know really you know he was like a fly on the wall as i was telling some of his accolades etc and he really loved that it made him so proud he had like a huge smile on his face and you know and so he really um you know he watched that full show that we did together and then he eventually uh, would watch all your shows. And so, yeah, he, he became like a little mini, like you were a celebrity to him. He really wanted to know uh, how Gavin was doing when I was out there, when we met in March, he wanted to make sure that I pass along his hellos. Well, thank you, Brett. It's a, that's a beautiful story of the, 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 you know, you out on that patio, that high rise in Mexico in that first interview, you know, and you, <laughs> I didn't know that dad was in the background watching the whole time. I was always wondering. So, Let's go over yeah. to you, Marquez. You got your hand up, buddy. Good, good afternoon or good evening. Yeah, hi. It's it's an interesting observation. Well, not a. It's a story, Brett, of of your dad. He he seems to have been in a position like many of us are. He was thinking, how do you get this new copy machine technology get adopted and used? 
and that's where we are now. And what he found and what he applied was that we start transacting with each other. Well, he said, you know, start sending copy, uh, sending uh, photocopies to each other. But in our case, it really is, we can mirror that and say, just start transacting with each other. Um, and yeah, if we can, like I said earlier, since we spend money for, you know, for our haircuts, for our clothing, for the food that we eat, what if we just spend those in BSVs? Because every transaction that we do adds market va adds value, economic value to every Satoshi. And the more everyone does that, does, does that, that it creates more value of what these Satoshis are because they're actually useful. Um, and by creating value, if a value of a Satoshi is tied into the food that you eat, the clothes that you wear, things that keep you warm, things that keep you fed, keep things that keep you sheltered, keep things that keep you healthy, all of a sudden, BSV's value will not be tied into the fear and greed of people, which is what causes market fluctuations. It's what causes the quick rises and 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 crashes of these uh, crypto assets because they don't actually have their value is not tied into anything that's useful. It's just tied into greed and tied into fear. But when each satoshi actually means something, when you've bought milk with it, when you've bought a car with it, uh, when you've you've earned. Uh, doing a website development for it, it meant something for you. So you're not going to quickly sell these things just because the market is crashing. You know, by us focusing on just using BSV, basically converting our fiats and you use it to be BS, for BSV because it's more convenient. Um, not just for the sake of using it, but it really is just more convenient. It's cheaper to use, especially in a global economy then that's how, where we can begin, like your dad began with this, with promoting the use of fax machines, copy machines. How do people, and how do people do that, uh, Marquez? Or, you know, what, you know, you're, a, you're a new person. You never, you never done it. You know, you want to, you want to say, Hey, I want to pay you in this because I don't know if it was, it was somebody tells a great story about how when they first got Bitcoin, it was because they were paid in it. And I don't know if it was you know, a long time ago. I don't remember. There's been lots of these stories, but they got a hold of it and somebody paid them a bunch of it. And then they just sat in a wallet, forgot about it. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, this, this is something of value. I should use this. So, you know, now in this day and age, we're kind of at that same place. So how, how, how can someone do that? If you're, if you're talking to a new person, where do they start? It's, uh, well, I, I think... There's so many to do, and, and that's why I hesitate because just my, my mind is just uh, going everywhere. Uh, but a lot of, I mean, the little thing that we can do is if if we just set aside, like I said, you know, you've got your stash of VSVs, you, you hold on to them, you treat, um, but let's, but knowing the fact that you spend, say, 200 euros, 200 pounds, 200 dollars on on something weekly or monthly have exchanged your fiat for that to bsvs and then find people who give who sell products and services that you're that you need um and as you say you know we don't expect everyone to keep to start trading 100 percent of their income in bsvs but maybe just a percent or a transaction here and there and then they might realize that that in in the future these things are worth a lot more um than what they are at the moment that's beautiful all right i so... mean the biggest danger too i think a more crucial thing is now we love we now live in a multipolar world uh you know, there's political competition uh, between governments 
and between their currencies. The US dollar, as you've known, Saudi Arabia has now dropped the US dollar as a, as the main mode transaction transacting. You've got the BRICS nations trying to create their currency to compete. So you've got all these competing governments now. And in in a future, in a in a world like that, how do you trust? What do you trust? Because now there's no dom the dominance in terms of economic power, political power is, is now becoming more distributed. And I think that's where Bitcoin can come in because people, if Bitcoin remains to be this, if you don't touch the protocol, you don't favor one nation, one government over the other, it starts becoming more trusted. So, so let's... Uh... Thank you, Marquez. And I'd like to just pa pass over to Panama. You know, you're down there in South America. It seems like you guys have had a lot of, uh, I don't know about that particular country, but some of the South American com com countries have had some difficulties with their currency um, staying valuable, you know, and so maybe you could chime in a little bit on your perspective if you're out of that out of that area that, that you were in before. Oh, you're off the stage. So no problem. So if anybody else wants to chime in, feel free to, we can open up. And uh, and open up now if you want to raise your hand or come up on stage, you know, as we're kind of winding down. Emilio, Brett, Mila, Casey, anyone else want to come up? Now's your chance. Yes, I would like to just point out uh, that BS Research also has a YouTube channel, which is also is it's one of my favorite, next to Sertoshi and Gavin's channel as well. And uh, he's posting some educational videos. So, uh, yeah, that's another thing to know about. Mm. BSV Search channel. BSV Search, yeah. And I've got them on the screen for the recording for everyone. Thanks for the plug. Yeah. Yeah. And, look, yeah, let me know if there's anything I can do. I mean, my, my main thing is to promote everyone, anything that's BSV. Um, because at the end, we're all working in the same team. Um, you know, every every value that we commit or that we sort of contribute to BSV, it adds to to our the value of our BSV tokens. Basically, you know, Maybe. at the end of the day, we all work for BSV in a sense. You know, but by working for BSV, we're working for ourselves. Yeah, maybe Ruth's book should be somewhere on there as well. <laughs> Definitely. Now, BSV Panama. Panama, you want to come up? You're back on the stage. Did you ha want to add anything to that? Yeah, sorry. I was uh, I had an interruption in, in the network, and uh, I, I was automatically coming back, but it, it was as a, as a, as a listener yeah, yeah. instead of a speaker. Yeah, thank, can, thank you for putting me back. We can hear you now. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I heard the last uh, few words. Ah, by the way, Ruth has a, has the book on canonics, so they, you can get it on BSV or BTC on 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 the canonic side. You know there is a uh, canonic uh, XYZ. I think it's the is the name of it, and then you can buy it there in BSV as well. Anyway, I think you you were telling you were asking me a question. Uh, I didn't get it all because I got interrupted. Marquez was talking about how, how there's uh, countries in South America that have had a lot of uh, uh, inflation and their currency is not valuable. Or maybe I brought that up, but he kind of uh, going in that direction. And you're in South America. So how, how, is that, uh, how has that affected you with currency devaluation or, or, or maybe your neighbors? No, not right now, uh, for the past... Almost ten years I've been in Panama, so Panama uh, is is on the U.S. dollar. So I, I'm um, there is no the, 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 it's the same devaluation as the U.S. dollar devaluation. But um, I know a little bit about Brazil and Venezuela and Ecuador. I was there, so yeah, I would say that um, it, 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 it's a huge problem because you know the. Every every time they change the currency, I remember Brazil. I was there when they still, even before the the change that they made in in the nineties, 
uh, with the new currency. They had another currency. I don't even remember what the name was. Uh, and then they changed to the real, and the real was was worth more than one real was more than one one dollar. And then it started devaluating, and people they just tried to get around it with a lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of tricks. You know, they find tricks to get around it, but uh, it's a it's a big problem, uh, especially for for uh, high interest rates. When when people pay with credit cards, the, the interest rates are huge, and uh, and it gets worse and worse. And then at some point, what the government does is just change the currency and make the make the previous currency um, invalid, and then the people have to change to the new currency, and everything is. is in, it's, 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 it starts from zero, you know. But but this is this is craziness, you know. It, I mean, a system like BSV would uh, would would bring in uh, the perfect uh, stability for this kind of uh, economies because uh, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be uh, affected by by that, you know. I mean, if I don't know if 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 there were. Um, of course, if they keep the same currency and they issue tokens uh, and then they make it uh, run on the same currency, maybe that would be a problem. But uh, if uh, if the system would be based on purely on BSV, like BSV search is saying, then then the problem is solved and there is no more no more devaluation and mm -hmm. and people can continue making their business very happily and. Uh, Without having to always find a new ways to to make back money when they lost it, you know, every day they lose money. So they they make they make prestamos, they make uh, loans, they make everything they can in order to try to get the money back. But it's a, it's a mess. So everybody basically is suffering from that. BSV is the solution, definitely. Ah, sounds like a all right. So anyone. Uh, uh, Emilio, Brett, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I'll come in for a second, Brett. Sorry. Um, Please. I just wanted to, I, I just wanted to say, like, you know, I'm I'm gonna stick I'm gonna stick I'm coming back here. I, I like we, the, this format we got going twice a week. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to make it all the time, but I, I will announce like future progress with blockchain house Portugal. We have our first person that's gonna be staying there. Uh, I'm trying to uh, get a hold of Sempi to uh, do something with me so I can have my first uh, year contract at the house pay in BSV. But uh, Sempi is having a hard time getting back to me, I suppose. But I did it, you know, first I did it on social media, then they told me to email their help center, and now I'm waiting on uh, their help center for two weeks now. Uh, maybe somebody could help on here on that. But, uh, yeah, I'll keep everybody informed. I, you know, I, I'm thinking of coming up with a scheme because my, uh, my third floor is not finished. So if anybody wants to stay at Blockchain House Portugal for free and they want to contribute a knowledge that they have in plumbing or uh, electricity or something like that and want to go to spend the, in the Algarve in Portugal a couple of weeks, let me know. We can make a trade. So we're talking, you know, BSV Search was talking about a trade. Uh, I haven't listed Blockchain House Portugal on there, but I think I will do that now and I'll be in touch with BSV Search. So, you know, here, you know, we were t you guys were talking about your, your dad, Brett, about uh, doing the, the fax machine, right? So I think the first use was the business to business. So here we are, a perfect example. We'll, we'll be doing some business to business first. And as our, as our clients or customers are ready uh, to do that, they will do that, you know, it, it, outside of other yeah, projects, yeah. right? Like, Outside, I have like, you know, a Pipeline NJ, which was, uh, I owned the club for 14 years, which is really popular now, uh, more than when it was open, I think. So I'm doing a limited run of t-shirts with the NFC and the token and a, and a pay forward scheme and all that. So we just have to bring this to more people so more people are aware of it. And if we have something that people want to follow, they'll go through the steps, you know, just like a grandma wanting to see the kids on Facebook, they'll learn how to do a Facebook sign. Well, this is a but great connection. Go, got BSV search, so you're going to yeah. put that on the website so people could find this particular uh, uh, Portugal blockchain chain house Portugal as a as a service like a, a barter that service that people can can use. So that's beautiful. Yeah, I put the website up in the nest here, so everybody can. Check it. 
thank you. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, thank you. And I'm going to go because I'm my my kids and my wife are taking me to dinner for Father's Day. I mean, dinner, lunch, I don't even know what it is. I didn't have any, neither of that stuff. I feel like I'm, you know, in this new Wild West since Dr. Craig Wright, uh, uh, this whole court thing went, went haywire. I feel like we're back in the Wild West. So I'm, you know, I'm like guns drawn and all kinds of stuff. But it was good hearing all of you. And I'll go listen to the recording. So thank, thank you, you a lot Emilio. for this Great. Uh, so why don't we go back over to you, Brett? See, uh, you know, as we're winding down here, and, uh, you know, we got this Dad's Day edition for the X Town Hall Mastermind. So uh, what, what, what uh, you know, I mean, <clears throat> what sort of last words does anyone want to add? Brett, you're welcome to chime in. Or, you know, we'd love to hear from you or, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I just want to say, you know, and I might be uh, biased on this and, uh, you know, I think you'll forgive me maybe if I have some bias on this. But, you know, the other thing that I just think is so special and valuable about what we're building here is, you know, the people power, you know, the relationship capital, you know, um, the, it's it's something where it doesn't come up necessarily on a spreadsheet when you're or on a market cap, right? When you're looking at the market cap of a coin, et cetera, you know, you don't see the relationship capital there. But really, you know, it's not necessarily, there's a famous quote, and I can't remember exactly who said it, but it was something to the effect of, you know, um, it is not valuable to get the opinion of a thousand people when not a single one of them knows anything on the subject or the topic, right? Sometimes we tend to come up with this idea of that the numbers are really the valuable thing, especially when we're talking about network effect and things like this, right? It's like, oh, you just have to get over and above this certain number threshold, and that is the indicators of success, right? But, you know, the number threshold is the, is the you know, it's in some ways it's the fool's gold, right? Because if number capital was the only thing that was important, then we wouldn't need protections against civil attacks, right? We would be wanting to encourage civil attacks. Yeah, civil us, because that's more numbers and isn't numbers what's actually valuable, right? But no, we, uh, you know, we, we, you can look around you and you can see that the, um, you know, the, the value of, of the truth may be that you do have fewer people on board at first, right? Because that's actually valuable because now you're not having to sort through all of this different, you know, imagine trying to figure out who was someone of real value in, you know, like uh, BTC or Solana, you know, when everything is just all about hype and pump and dumping and, you know, all of this stuff. I mean, how can you really, you know, uh, find, you know, you'd have to spend so much more time sorting through all of that. Um, you know, so, so I really want to emphasize that on, um, in terms of, you know, one of our advantages that we have is just the types of people that are being drawn to this project to, um, you know, to advance these uh, causes of liberty and, you know, distributed um, decentralization on a, on a, um, on a locked in stone protocol, fairness, um, you know, giving people the time of day, not, not uh, just, you, you know, throwing, you know, like, cause if we all just listen to the first uh, opinion on, on BSV or the first opinion on Craig that we would have got, then yeah, we would have, uh, we would have thrown, you know, thrown it out and never, never gotten to see the, the value that it represents. So, um, you know, but, but again, that's value that uh, the, the value of it is not necessarily an extractive value that we are looking to pull out of the network you know, by just hoping that number goes up or something like this. But what it is, is it's a, a more uh, seamless way that we can integrate, communicate, and share knowledge with each other. You know, um, that only has value to a network of people who, who thrive on valuable information. If you're a network of people who depend on, uh, you, know, um, you know, scams and, you know, uh, all this stuff, then yeah, then that doesn't have any value to you. You don't want a permanent, immutable, auditable history, right? You want it to be as murky as possible so that you can get away with manipulating people as easily as possible. And so, uh, so you know, the, the nice part, again, we're going back to that, the unshakable foundation. This is our unshakable foundation. And it's not about trying to scale this to, you know, billions of people tomorrow, right? It's really about, 
you know, one of the things that we can do is we can do an inventory of ourselves, you know, and sometimes the inventory of ourselves is, is so valuable because at the end of the day, you know, even the best of us are holding on to things that are holding us back. You know, and and we need to confront that when we talk about Father's Day, you know, one of the qualities that's a powerful quality of fatherhood is, you know, a confrontation when it is sensible to do so, when it's necessary to do so. And that means even confronting uh, that which is within ourselves, which is holding us back from our true potential and our true power. And the other thing that's really important uh, is, is, is imagination. You know, when we're young, we have this ability to be imaginative. And, you know, along the way in life, sometimes we learn that, you know, that we have to shelve that side of ourselves, that uh, imagination is something that is meant for four-year-olds, but it's not meant for, you know, uh, an adult world. And, you know, but we're looking at this, wor this world, this unshakable foundation of digital truth that BSV represents, that Bitcoin represents, and we see that actually imagination is really valuable in this phase of our growth because there's so little here, right? So we have to just imagine what will be here next. And, you know, that's when it comes back to that idea of taking the first step of 50% of the project being over when you take the first step. And you know, I'm living proof of that. Um, you know, with my life, the, the way that I've uh, gotten to where I am, you know, it is the in the least predictable fashion, you know, like when you look at, you know, the Cartesian universe, where there's only cause and effect, and this concept of free will, you know, that's for the birds, uh, you know, that doesn't exist, science is able to explain everything for us. And we're just an illusion. We're a uh, hallucination of ourselves. Uh, but don't worry, science has figured this all out. Uh, you know, and you're just, you know, you're the product of, uh, of the circumstances that that came before you, you know, but that that's completely wrong you know and yet that's one of the uh hallmarks of the world that we're living in we're living in this world of complete uh uh surfaces only surfaces no depth and you know yet we're coming to this world of surfaces from this place of of supreme depth right supreme depth in who we are in our ancestry and you know our uh, relation back to the uh, the wisdom of our grandmothers and our grandmothers, 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 etc., that we've carried on sometimes through oral traditions, sometimes through just instinct. You know, as we still have a a one foot in this animalistic world of of being very instinctual. You know, we still are all the time analyzing information and making instinctive, instant decisions about them, about it based on the proof of work. And so, you know, but but we come back to that um, that unshakable foundation of of that imagination can provide us being able to uh, to imagine something and then working towards it. And, you know, I, I really, um, you know, I, I encourage everyone to to do that and not to do that in isolation. Right. But really, that's what these mastermind classes are about. It's about coming forward. It's about being vocal about the uh, the next steps. And, you know, using the crowd wisdom, the wisdom, not just of the numbers, but the quality of the relationship capital that is being drawn to these ideals, to this vision, and using that to refine our processes and our approach and saying, you know what? Yeah, I've been hanging on to this idea. And you know what? That's just complete BS. Like, I have to let that idea go. I have to discard it, you know? And, and sometimes it's the ability to let an idea that seems alluring, but that ultimately is is like empty, you know, and, and it's just trying to suck you into it. It's letting that go. Even if it leaves you with pure nothing, with absolute nothing, that can be a better place because as long as that nothing rests on an unshakable foundation, then what you build afterwards, you know, you can come back to and it'll be there tomorrow. And that's what I want to be for everyone here. I want to be here for you tomorrow and not just uh, tomorrow, but every day going forward. And you know what? We're going to laugh one day when we look back 10 years from now, 15 years from now and say, man, those are complete long shot odds. Nobody gave us a chance. Right. And uh, and yet 
it, we're not going, uh, we're going on, you know, something that is stronger than any one of us has, that's stronger than any one individual among us, you know, and it's, and we need these, this encouragement, these mastermind sessions uh, to, to reconnect to that and to re uh, invite ourselves to, to lead with that imagination. You know, imagination is also one of the key principles in the in the law of success and the science of success philosophy that Napoleon Hill brought forward and, and then grow rich. And in uh, the just as a reminder, as we we wind down and close, it's uh, Hill. He wrote that book at the White House in 1933 in one of the most discouraging, worst times in our American history, where we're facing a Great Depression and FDR was just, bare, you know, very people were barely hanging on there and just absolutely and he's volunteering there at the white house he wasn't being paid but here he is in this terrible negative environment he's writing this book think and grow rich in the white house under excruciating hard difficult times the most difficult times brings some of brings the most the best you know number one selling success book of all time hands down there's no there's no there's no nothing even close you know the most difficult times brings the most successful success book of all time. And so in that, in that book though, is this mastermind principle and this definiteness of purpose and imagination like Brett talked about is and all of us coming together in this uh, with also positive mental attitude. That's right. So important that we, that we keep a positive mental attitude with each other and encourage each other. A negative mind only spawns negative ideas. And remember that, uh, that they never built a statute for a critic. Guys are hating on people all day. They never built a statue for that guy. It's always somebody that did something great, something positive. You know, remember that your only limitations are, are, are ones that you set in your own mind. And so if we if we just do a little bit more every single day than we're paid for, just a little bit more, then soon enough we'll be uh, paid a lot more than anything that we ever do. So um, on that note, I'll be happy to open up to any last, last comments or questions um, and then a motion that we close this space and everybody enjoy Father's Day. So Casey, Mila, uh, any any last words of wisdom here? Nope. All right. Yeah, make love, not war. Make love, not war. Later. <laughs> make love, not war. Exactly. I mean, we all we all are different with challenges, and and in and this space here, we can bring our. If there are grievances, please come forward. You know, you're always welcome to. I get messages about people, but other people it's important that we address people head on when we do have issues um you know because if you have an issue with me i want to know about it i want to talk to you about it so it's important and that's how we 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 solve these things and one of the one of the last things i want to leave you with is that is that zero limits book casey you you complimented the uh the hawaiian principles uh it's a it's a hawaiian principle and and when we do when there is a grievance that someone has those four prayers, it's, I, I love you, I, I, I love you, I forgive you, I thank you, I'm sorry. And, and it has some sort of a, of a resonance, it sends out some sort of a vibrational frequency, even for a person you cannot reach. So if a person will not talk to you and you can't go to them, because of course the first thing is to talk to them. But if, they, if there's no way, if they're, if they're lost uh, or they're no longer around, they won't call you back, then you, know, you got that to that set to send out to them and it and it seems to set the reset the frequencies and the negative energy i love you i thank you i forgive you i'm sorry in ourselves so then we can can change our vibration back on that positive level with this unshakable foundation as brett talks about you know that's the idea the unshakable foundation that we're all that we're all so passionate about so all right well, i just uh, Please I say one last thing. You know, I love the connections that were made here today with BSB Search and Emilio. I think that's a great um, connection. And also, I just want to encourage everybody to, you know, reach out to each other, hook up for one on ones and, you know, keep the conversation going individually. Um, that's really where the magic happens, too, is when you can have more private conversations and go a little deeper than we're able to hear. So. Um, just want to encourage everybody to do that. And again, happy Father's Day. I hope you guys have an awesome afternoon. All right. On that note, we'll close. And I'll leave you with my signature line. I'll see you at the top.